Hey everyone, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for coming back to check out another video. I just made an awesome sale. All I gotta do is pack it up. I'm excited. I'm gonna show you, ready to go. I just gotta go grab it. Let me go find it. Um, wait a minute, I thought I had it here somewhere. It's gotta be somewhere around here. I think I put it up top. Uh, nope, it's not there. Maybe it's in one of these. Maybe it's in one of these boxes. Hold on a sec. Maybe it's in here. Let me just check. It's got to be in here. Uh, nope, it's not in there. Um, maybe it's in the closet right here. Hold on a second. Let me just take a look and see if it's in there. I think it's in here. I really want to show it to you. It's amazing. Sold for a great price. Buyer's going to be real excited when they get it. Hold on. Hang on. I'll be right back. Um, uh, wait, up here. No, maybe, maybe it's down here. Ah, oh, man. I just cannot find it. Okay, you get the point. This has happened to most sellers online, whether or not you sell on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Mercari, doesn't matter. There's times where you're going to misplace an item. What do you do when that happens? How do you find the item? How do you react? And what do you do to try to prevent it going forwards? That's what I want to talk to you about in this video. Uh, this is something that has happened to me a few times uh, fortunately, I've never completely lost the item that I could not find it, but there have been times that I've misplaced it. It's say that it happened about three times over the past year, as recently as the other day, actually. Uh, I misplaced it for, it took me about a minute to find it, but so that wasn't too bad. But there was one time where it took me about an hour to find the item, and that was uh, pretty frustrating. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about what to do when that happens and, and how to maximize the chances that you're going to find the item and then some steps that you could do going forwards to prevent it from happening again. So the first thing that you have to do, number one, is you have to stay calm. Okay, If you start going into a panic and thinking about all the worst case situations that are going to happen, for example, I'm never going to find it. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to locate where it is. I don't, uh, I'm worried that I can't find it and now I'm going to get a negative feedback or a neutral feedback. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose money. This is terrible. All negative thoughts coming into your head at once. You've got to clear those things out. Okay. You've got to stay calm and you've got to think logically. So you have to tell yourself, all right, calm down. It has to be here somewhere. You know that logically. It has to be there somewhere. You put the item up for sale. You listed it. You took photos of it. Uh, you held it in your hands. Uh, you know it hasn't sold before. You've, you, you, you know that. So you know it must be around somewhere. So what you have to do, depending on how much stuff that you have stored, is you just have to go location by location. And at first, you do more of a casual look through through each spot. But then you have to do a more systematic look through where you're taking things apart piece by piece in each section and making sure not to overlook sections where you would automatically think in your head, no, it can't possibly be there. Because that's sometimes the place where it is. It could be that you just uh, had multiple items together and you accidentally uh, left one in a pile that's not normally associated with what that particular item is. So let's say maybe it's some kind of ceramic item and you were also listing books at the same time and maybe you accidentally lift, lift, li left the ceramic item by the books. That could happen. So don't just automatically say, no, nah, it can't be by the book section because it, it might be there. So you might want to just take a look over there. Uh, also, make sure you go into the area where you prepare things. Uh, your prep area. You could have accidentally just taken it there and and left it there. It could be in your shipping area. It could be in the place where you normally take pictures. Make sure you look under the couch, uh, you know, under a table or, uh, you know, areas that there might be something on top of. Maybe there's a bunch of papers somewhere. Make sure you look under the papers. Stay calm. Enlist other people around you to try to help if, uh, you know, you think they could be of some assistance, a family member or a friend who might be around to try to look for the item that it is. Don't immediately send a message to the buyer telling them, I can't find your item. Depending on how many, how many uh, uh, days you have for, for handling, so if you have one or two days, wait the full day before you contact the person and let them know what's going on. Usually, again, you're going to be able to find it. If you cannot find it, okay, 
then you know maybe it'll turn up later on down the road but if you can't find it by the time you are supposed to ship it out to the buyer uh, you have to communicate that to the buyer you have to let them know what's going on and you're gonna have to use your judgment based on how likely it is you think the item is going to turn up that if they give you a few more days that um, you know you'll, you'll likely find it and in those situations most buyers I think would be um, accepting of that and be willing to wait an extra day or two they're obviously you know not going to wait forever if you cannot find the item in a time that is reasonable for the buyer, let's say you agree on give me an extra two days or something like that, uh, I highly suggest you do something to compensate your buyer. So if you have an alternative item, a double of the item, or you could give the buyer a discount for whatever the price was of your item for something else on your store, I would highly suggest doing that because I'll tell you what's gonna happen. If you cannot find that item and you just tell the buyer, sorry, I can't find it, and the order winds up just getting canceled as a result of that, that buyer is likely going to leave you a neutral feedback at a minimum, and they may leave you a negative feedback. So. Uh, and that's not going to be something that's going to be able to be removed and it could damage you. And that really stinks for an item that maybe only costs like $8.99 or something and you just did something silly and you misplaced it and now you're going to have a negative feedback or a neutral feedback on your, your profile for a year. Obviously, the negative feedback will be worse. Um, but so you want to try to make sure you're communicating from the outset with the buyer um, when I say the outset, when, uh, that means the point where the time has uh, pretty much elapsed that you're, that you're given to try to uh, find the item based on your handling time, not right at the moment that you realize, oops, I can't find it. Because again, most times it is going to turn up. You might have to turn everything upside down, but eventually you're going to find it. Now, when that happens, it is a stressful experience. Again, you want to try to stay as calm as possible. And depending on what the outcome of it is, like if you really ultimately did lose it and can't find it, that's going to determine um, or should determine what you're going to do in the future to go about fixing this problem. And you also uh, you know, should try to be proactive with it to try to reduce the incidence of, uh, of this occurring. Now, if you don't sell too much on eBay and you only sell you know, five items, 10 items a week or something like that, and you don't have a ton of inventory, then it's going to be pretty easy for the most part to locate where your items are. But the larger the, the, they are, the easier they are to find as well. It's the smaller items that typically become the ones that you misplace and are tricky to find. Um, but as you start to become more experienced on eBay or, or you know, whatever other uh, venue you sell on, um, and you start selling more and more volume, there's going to be more and more inventory you're going to have to find a way to efficiently keep track of and manage, and you're going to have to have some type of system in place, some type of organizational system. Organization and structure really is the key. Now, there's all sorts of different ways you could go about doing it. Some are more structured than others. It really depends on what works for you, and you'll know what works for you because you'll know whether or not the system you have in place is resulting in you being able to easily locate the items or not. I'm interested in hearing some of the suggestions that you have in terms of the things that you do, but let me just, I'll tell you a couple things that I do and a couple other things that you can do. Uh, and again, part of it's going to be based on what it is you sell. Now, as you know, I if you've watched my videos before, one of the areas that I specialize in is selling comic books. And I've explained this in some of my prior videos, but these are actually comic book boxes. Now, these are called short boxes. There are other ones that are longer. I might be able to show you some of those later that are long boxes. But this is a collection that I purchased uh, a while ago that originally had uh, over 4,000 comic books in them. And so what I did when I got them is I organized all of them alphabetically. And then I labeled them on the outside of the box. So for example, you could see right here, I'll bring this one up. Right here, it says, let me get it in the better light there. And that light is not great. That's kind of messing up. Oh, there you go. It says I, okay? So those are all comic books that start with the letter I. So for example, you can see, I'll just show you a couple, two things right here. We've got Impossible Man, and we've got Incredible Hulk. So when I sell Impossible Man, it's very easy for me to find this book out of 4,000 because I know I just go to box I and then I just grab the book out and just find it. And it just takes two seconds to do. If this was all disorganized and random, 
<laughs> it would be impossible for me to find that book. No pun intended. Uh, so, you know, some letters there's a lot of books for. So for the letter M, for example, there's a lot. So what I do for that is it just says, um, let me get that up here again. It just says M2. So I have a box that's M1 and I have a box that's M2. And so um, that's just for you know, multiple boxes with titles that start with the letter M. So if you're selling uh, comic books or, or magazines or even smaller books or things that you can organize in boxes, that alphabetic uh, um, labeling system could easily help you. And that's just an easy way to, to, to find the item. Another thing that you could do is called inventory labeling. So let's say, for example, and this is a piece of a set that I have online. It's a ceramic uh, set from the 60s or 70s. They're called, uh, the, uh, the company that makes them is called Sexton. And there's a little uh, ceramic dog. It hangs on the bathroom wall. And it goes as part of a little set. And so it's a small item. Now, this is something that's uh, prone to being lost. Okay. So... Um, now there's other pieces that go with it, but and they're, but they're also relatively small. So what you can do is you could take these items, okay, and you have a little baggie like this, all right, just like that, and you could write on the outside of it. For example, let's say we're just starting our inventory system, we could just write A one, so A one. So my bag says A one, right on the outside, right there, okay. So I just put the item in here, and then I take a um, like a little storage unit, like a little plastic pull-out storage unit. I label the outside of that A1, and I just put it right inside the um, right inside the little um, storage shelf. So then, when I do my listing at the very end on the title or within the description itself, just somewhere towards the end, you just write A1. Okay, that's it. So then when it sells, you know, oh, I just have to go to my A1 box. So you go over to your A1 box, find your item, pull it out. That's simple. Now you might be wondering why write A1 on the bag if you're just going to put this in the A1 box to begin with. Well, you don't want to write anything really on the item. So it's just easy to put it in the bag. Plus, if you're doing multiple listings at once, and you don't want to keep running up and down the stairs or running over to your storage area. You could just put this in your A1 bag, put it to the side, go to the next, next listing, go to the next listing. And it, you know, the next item might be something that you put in a box called B1. So A1 may just be for ceramic items. B1 might just be for uh, utensils, you know, C1 might just be for, you know, um, pottery or something like that. And, you know, then you might do A2. A2 could be ceramics after you've filled up the A1 box. So you just kind of uh, create an organized system like that. And it's really quick, easy, simple to do. Uh, I personally don't use that system yet, but in the future I might because my inventory keeps getting uh, larger and larger and larger in terms of the volume that I'm selling keeps increasing. So it's possible I might do that. Uh, I'm going to show you what I do right now, which is basically based on a visual memory and um, um, shelving system, organizational system, in terms of just putting things together in like groups. And I'm going to actually uh, show you some other uh, other spots here of the primetime treasure headquarter catacombs here, which I've not shown before. So let me just take you along for a little walk here. Uh, this is some of my uh, additional storage stuff. This is just, you know, I think that uh, you see my back wall there. I've got some, you know, comic book related art. That's just stuff I like to have down here because it just gives a nice little feel to like the little store that I like to create. Um, this is actually a tin sign from a, um, uh, a, uh, convenience store I used to work at when I was uh, a, a, a child. Uh, so it brings me back good memories. Got that nice vintage sign look because I do sell vintage signs. And, you know, here's a few other things right here in terms of some uh, signage that I keep here. But uh, I have different collections. So as you can see here, these are called long boxes. So if I open this up, you're going to see here, there's hundreds of comic books in this box. And there's more down there. And then behind there, there's four more. So, um, I keep them in separate locations based on the collection that they are. So, um, you know, this is a collection that I bought in a certain city. So I give it a name according to the city and I label it on the side of the box. So that's how I do that. So this way I know, okay, this, that, the certain comic book is from that city. So I need to go get that. And I just have it kind of memorized in my head in terms of where it's from. 
So, but I keep them in different places and I don't mix them up together. Now, I'm gonna show you something else here, which is another thing that you might wanna do. So, let me just step away, which is right here, you're gonna see shelving. Um, this is all shelving that I've uh, invested in, and I have shelving units like this throughout the house. I purchased this at Home Depot, and uh, or you could get them at Lowe's. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five um, shelving, um, uh, um, five shelf piece here, and they sell for about sixty-seven, seventy dollars uh, with uh, with tax. So. Uh, they are tax deductible, by the way. So I do um, advise saving your receipt. You could deduct it off of your business. But what I do is I keep things in um, certain categories here. So right down here, for example, you'll see here I've got all my Funko Pops that I sell. And so they're all listed in one area. And not only are they listed in one area, but you'll see these ones right here. Like, for example, that one there says Star Wars. That's a Star Wars Funko Pop right here. That's a Star Wars Funko Pop right here. That's a Star Wars Funko Pop. So I not only do I keep them according to what the toy is, but also within the toy line, I also organize it based on what subcategory it is. Like another example of that would be, this is from a title called um, Attack on Titan. And sorry, the lighting's not that great, but it says Attack on Titan right on top there. And then you'll see right below, here's another one that says Attack on Titan. So that's how I do it. Just keep it nice and organized. Shoes, I keep down here on the bottom. So I've got some, you got a shoe box here. Shoe box there. So I keep shoes down there. Um, clothes. I have my clothing bin out there in terms of clothes that I actually need to list, but once they get listed, I take them out of there and I move them right over to this section. So these are clothes, like for example, this is a, um, a set of army fatigues. It's a, a battle dress uniform that I put up last night. And so I just fold it up and I put it right here. Some of you follow me know that I've been selling uh, Harley Davidson items from a Harley Davidson collection. So I just have this folded up. This is a nice Harley Davidson shirt that I've got for sale uh, listed up in my store. So that's right there. So now when I make a sale and I know that I sold the shirt, I know all I got to do. I got to come down here. I got to grab it, take it, pull it out. Up top here, you're going to see other types of items that are also uh, grouped similarly. I'll just kind of move this up a little bit. But you'll see here, for example, these are all um, comic books according to a, a certain series. This is called Savage Sword of Conan. So all these books right there are Savage Sword of Conan books. Or right down there, you can see all these are Calvin and Hobbes books. So I know all my Calvin and Hobbes books are there. Or right here, I've got kind of this random, looks like kind of this random bag back here. But these are all Super Mario plush doll characters. So they're all right there. They're all together. They're all grouped. Um, you know, hats and stuff. Like this is a Russian uh, military hat. I've got all the hats up top. This is a Harley Davidson uh, cap for women. That's up top right there. This is, um, you know, one for men. You know, kind of like a bandana, kind of headscarf type of thing. This is one from Progressive Auto Insurance. You know, this is, um, you know, another type of kind of old... You know, vintage wool hat that I've got there. You get the point. You know, it's kind of another one that I've got right there. With a nice little kind of red feather on it. So uh, that's uh, one of the other ways that you go about doing this is that you can just um, organize things that way. Um, this right here, what I was to show you, this is um, right here. These are, this would be like one of the tubs of clothes that I would just pull from. So, you know, just kind of open up right here. And then you can see inside, I've got a bunch of clothes that I'm gonna post up and I'm gonna list. So that's basically um, uh, how I do it. Like I said, I know there's other uh, organizational systems out there. I'd be interested in hearing um, what kind of systems that you use, what kind of systems are effective for you. Drop a link down below. I appreciate you coming over to check out this video. If you liked it and if you liked the first ever semi-tour of Primetime Treasure Headquarters, please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you come over 
look down at the link below for the uh, Facebook Reselling Resource Center. That's a social media group that I started. It's growing every day, every week. It's a great group of supportive people that get together and talk about all topics related to reselling. Lots of great information there. Come check it out. Submit a join request. I'll look at your profile. If everything looks good, you're instantly on and part of the group. So please try to do that. Also, if you like this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I look to see if that subscribe number is going up. And if it's going up, that motivates me to make more videos. Plus, you get notifications whenever new videos come out. With that, I'm going to go and do some sourcing today, looking to get some more comic books and collectibles to add to my collection and keep growing that business. Happy reselling, and I hope to see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.